Hello, I'm going to describe issues that very often come up for people who have a lot of Aries in their birth charts. And these are issues that come up especially in close relationships, very close friends, and especially romantic relationships and relationships with marriage partners. Be, what happens is that very often problems in close relationships are related to very basic needs in our lives and our basic orientation to life. And what we have found in some research that we conducted on people who have a lot of a zodiac sign in their chart, like a lot of Aries, a lot of Taurus, I call these the super Aries, the super Taurus, the super Gemini. You know, they have their rising sign, the ruler, the ascendant, the sun, several planets, they have the most of a zodiac sign. And we study their biographies and try to figure out what do they really have in common. And what we came up with is there's something about their attitude, their priorities, the way they visualize things, the things that are most important to each person are described by the zodiac signs. And these priorities, these ways of looking at the world, have a strong effect on our personal relationships. So by applying the ideas from our research to our personal consultations that we have with our clients, to analyzing charts of friends and family, it really brings out issues that come up in the personal relationships. Okay, so what do we mean exactly by a strong zodiac sign? Number one, the rising sign. Whatever your rising sign is, that sign is strong. The rising sign is that important because the rising sign describes something that's important for you to express, to bring out, to share, to not have it repressed or stopped in some way. You want to bring it out. You want to share it. So I look at the rising sign as a major force that wants to come through and be shared. So some people look at the rising sign as a mask, something that's just an appearance. But I'm going to suggest it's not a mask. It's something you want to bring out into the world. And consequently, we're a little bit more sensitive about our rising sign, and it often becomes an issue in personal relationships. Also, the sun sign is important, and especially if there's another planet in that sign, very often, Mercury or Venus or some other planet is also in the sign of the sun. The moon sign and the sign of Venus are important. And I will talk about how th these different signs uh, of planets versus rising sign, how they're a little bit different from each other. And by the way, I use the tropical zodiac. So here's the issue that comes up for Aries in relationships over and over and over again. Honesty. Honesty often becomes the critical issue in the relationship. So, honesty is tricky business because all of us avoid saying things that are going to hurt someone's feelings. We'll avoid topics that somebody is sensitive about. Most of us, I think it's fair to say, are sensitive about our parents or children or perhaps our religion, perhaps personal issues like our physical appearance, one or more of these may be things that we're sensitive about, that are important to us, that we could be easily offended about. For different people, it could be different things. Well, obviously, we try to avoid getting into arguments and fights and hurting people's feelings. So we have to modify just brute honesty with some social sensitivity. And this is really the challenge of Aries, how to be authentic, how to get underneath the games we play, the expectations that people have, all of the social niceties. Because if we spend so much time adapting ourselves to environment, we forget what our deepest values are, what's most important to us. And Aries is this process of cutting away to be authentic, 
to be real. And the Aries is not even always aware of it. But where it often comes out is in relationships. So very important to Aries is where you are coming from. Now, note that when we emphasize this concept, where you're coming from, Aries is focused on that integrity, on, again, where you are coming from. Aries does not mind disagreeing. It does not mind having different tastes. So if you say to someone who has a lot of Aries, oh, I think you can do this better. Oh, I don't like your, you know, what you're wearing. I don't, you know, I would, this thing you just made is not so great. As long as the person feels that you are on their side, that you're not doubting their essential character and integrity, all is well. But if that, crit, you could call it criticism of the person, appears to be doubting something fundamental and essential about the person, now we have big problems. And you'll often find that people with Aries rising or several planets in Aries, this becomes an issue in the relationship. The issue is that they feel the other person is not on their, uh, their side. They feel the other person is not really a, deeply appreciating who they are. This becomes the key issue. This also comes up with Leo, by the way. So Aries and Leo have this in common. But it's a little bit different. For Aries, it's not that their feelings are hurt in a personal sense so much. It's a more like an existential feeling of what's the point? Why are we together when you don't see who I am? When we don't really see where we're coming from, when we're picking up on more superficial levels and not appreciating the core of where we're coming from. And when Aries feels that we're not being really honest and not having really an authentic relationship, its tendency is actually just to leave. And very often in a conversation, in the interaction between two people, the Aries person starts to feel like, oh, you know, the other person doesn't get me. Again, it's not so much that they're disagreeing about the fine details, but they don't get me. They don't really get where I'm coming from. They're not really getting the heart of what's important to me. And at that point, the bond can start to weaken, and the Aries will tend to drift off. So we tend to think of Aries as this warrior, this in-your-face fighting spirit. But actually, that's not the first instinct of Aries. The first instinct of Aries is actually to leave when there isn't this heart-to-heart -heart soul connection. So, some of the problems, other problems that can happen in a, a relationship with someone with a lot of Aries, and again, a lot of Aries can just be the rising sign, is trying to redefine the person, suggesting to them that, you know, why, like with, with a child or someone uh, in their late teens, maybe they're going to college, right? why don't you major in business instead of art? Or why don't you do this? And when the Aries person feels like, oh my God, you just don't get <laughs> anything about me. You know, you may, you may as well be talking to somebody, you know, from another planet. This is where the bond can start to weaken. They need this recognition of, of who they are and they want to recognize who you really are. So, um, let me read some of the things I say here. Feeling disappointed if the Aries person, Aries person meaning Aries rising or a lot of plants in Aries, feeling disappointed if the Aries person does not live up to your image of who you want them to be is a recipe for a disaster. 
Not all Aries people are extroverted in your, and in your face. Many of them are quiet and introverted. And if the Aries person is quiet and introverted, and you make them feel bad that they are this way, and you ask them, well, why don't you go out more? Why don't you go and see your friends? It's just going to create greater distance in the relationship. So with an Aries person, always try to make sure you, uh, the number one rule is to recognize what's in their heart, what's really important to them. If they're an introverted, deep kind of person, this is where they need to operate from. You don't want to force them out of their element. You must appreciate where they're coming from. And they may not even be clear about what's important to them. But somehow you have to sense it and recognize it and relate to it. Okay, again, little touch-ups, adjustments to what they're doing, no problem. It's only when it feels like you're not recognizing who they really are. So the details are not so important with Aries. It's the essential issue, and do not lose sight of what is essential. Let's take another scenario. Suppose you have a married couple and they're having financial problems. What do you do if your spouse has a lot of Aries? First and foremost with Aries, be clear about your priorities. In order to face these financial problems, how can your spouse do it without selling out, without compromising so much that their life has lost meaning. Because meaning for Aries comes from being authentic and being able to do what is most deeply real to them. So compromising is tricky for Aries. And don't rush into a lot of compromises too quickly. You want to somehow preserve the Aries vision what and what their purpose in life is. So, suppose your Aries spouse loves nature. Well, they may love nature in a way that's almost like a religious experience, like nature is the beginning of things. And then suggesting, oh, if we move to the city and we live in an apartment, we'll be able to get jobs. On a practical level, that may be true, but it could violate something so fundamental and core to the person. Now, this is important for everybody, but with Aries, it's the number one thing to, to be aware of. Okay, here's another thing to be aware of. Aries wants to be authentic. They want to be genuine. They don't want to play games. They don't want to be putting on a mask and be in a show. But they're not perfect. And they make mistakes. And Aries really dislikes lying, but I guess everybody lies at some point. And when Aries lies to themselves or realizes they're lying to other people, they feel really, really bad about it. So what you want to remember is that when an Aries person realizes that they haven't been honest. They haven't had this integrity. It's a very, very serious issue. Typically, there's feelings of guilt. Um, there's, it can be like a soul-churning transformation. So do not trivialize it. Acknowledge it. When Aries person says, you know, I didn't handle that right. I, I really wasn't honest with him. Don't trivialize it. Don't just say, well, it's okay. You know, no big deal. It is a big deal. <laughs> it is a big deal to Aries. So just recognize it. Acknowledge the struggle and the pain. And, and help them feel good that at least now they recognize it. And they're moving forward. Because each time Aries is able to recognize something that's not authentic, that's not genuine, and make a step forward, that's an important step, no matter how small or incidental it may seem in your lives. Oh, Aries has really two choices. They're going to be authentic. I'm exaggerating a little bit here. but They're going to become sociopaths. 
once Aries starts going down the road of playing games, it becomes so twisted, so malevolent, so confused, they cannot play with that. So they need to be as honest and clear as they possibly can, which also means that when you're with an Aries person, you have to have a fairly thin skin to allow them to be direct and honest. And also, contrary to popular opinion, fights, shouting matches, confrontations actually do not work with Aries. We have this idea that they're the warrior with the sword. This is a last resort. When Aries feels dominated or controlled, or they feel like others are expecting them to violate their highest priorities and principles, when they feel really stuck and they see no alternative, then they will engage in a war, in a fight of some kind. But it's a last resort. When Aries starts fighting, you know something is seriously wrong because all Aries really wants is to be honest and authentic. And they're only going to have to fight if all the doors have been shut and there's no way for them to express themselves. Now, we often say that Aries is a pioneer. This is true because when we try to be honest, when we constantly dig down to being authentic, we are individualistic. We are standing on our own two feet. And there's a good chance we'll see something new from a new perspective. And this brings in the freshness, the newness, and the pioneering nature of Aries. But remember, Aries' first instinct is to go off, to leave others, to isolate themselves. Because when you're by yourself, nobody is stopping you from thinking. And also it helps, the withdrawing helps you think about or feel what is really important to you because you're not constantly engaged and occupied and it helps you get deeper and figure out where you're coming from and what's most important. So don't be surprised when Aries needs that time alone. These are things we don't hear about with Aries, but it drives to the heart of what Aries really is. Interestingly, we say Aries is courage and you could say there's nothing that takes more courage than to be really honest. So in a way, courage is a key issue for Aries. So this is, yeah, this is my last slide. I just want to mention Aries rising. People are sensitive about their rising sign. Uh, they want to express their rising sign. So it's, it's always a critical sign. Your sun sign is your natural way of being. It's how you are when you're in your element. People are generally not as socially sensitive and vulnerable about their sun sign as they are with their rising sign. But it is still something that they want to live their lives by and be aligned with. So the honesty becomes fundamental wherever Aries is. And the moon sign, when the moon is in Aries, it's an automatic, built-in, instinctive way of responding. So if you... Uh, if if you try to obstruct or work against somebody's moon sign, then you move out, outside their comfort zone. The moon is where we find our family, our tribe, our lifestyle. So the moon in Aries feels comfortable with autonomy, with freedom, with encouragement and recognition for each person to be just the way they want to be and to allow them to openly express themselves and for others to not be overly sensitive about it. This is the comfort zone for Aries. And Venus is what we're attracted to. Venus in Aries is attracted to people who are simple and honest and authentic, not flashy, not covering up things with a lot of glamour or glitz, just to be direct and clear about something and not just floating through life, but to have come to some kind of essential understanding of what's important to them and what's important in life. So this is Aries and the issues that come up over and over and over again. Problems in relationships develop because we don't fully appreciate 
the extent that something is important to someone. And these are things to recognize about Aries, to recognize in yourself if you have a lot of Aries, if you're with someone with a lot of Aries. This can really help remove potential problems and help things move forward because now you're able to support the person in the way that they need to operate and function. Okay, thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Namaste.